Hi, I'm Sibeli Freire, and in this talk, I'm going to cover some complexity results for the resilience problem when we consider a subset of projunctive queries that have self joins. This is a joint work with Wolfgang Gerbauer, New Immelmann, and Alexander Mario. So, in order to define resilience, I'm going to give you an example. So, here we have a query Q, which is Boolean, that evaluates to true. So, in this problem, we are looking to identify how resilient a query is to changes in the database. For this particular database here, I need to delete two tuples in order to change the query answer. So the more tuples you need to delete, the more resilience the query is. And we are interested in finding the minimum set of tuples that changes the query answer. Uh, this problem is closely related to the deletion propagation with source side effects. And in fact, any complexity result for resilience also holds for this version of deletion propagation. And when we say complexity, what we mean is data complexity. So in previous work, we analyzed uh, complexity results for the self-joint free case. And in this setting, we would represent our queries by their dual hypergraph. So here on the left, we have the query as the one from the example. And on the right, we have the triangle query and its dual hypergraph representation. So upon inspecting the, the complexity of resilience for queries like this and many other, we were able to conclude that these two queries are fundamentally different. And the difference is the presence or absence of what we call a triad. So a triad in a query is any set of three atoms that are independently connected to each other. So what do we mean by this? Consider the triangle query. We say that R, S, and T are independently connected because if I pick any two of them, they are directly connected and they don't need the third atom to connect to each other. That's, not, that's clearly not the case for the query on the left. And upon defining this structure, we were able to show a dichotomy result that states that the resilience of a query that has a triad is going to be NP complete, and the resilience of any query that does not have a triad is going to be polynomial time. Uh, one thing to note is that to show that the problem is in polynomial time, we do a reduction to the network flow problem. So for the current work, what we are interested in doing is analyzing what happens when we allow self-joins to happen. So it's a natural question whether the, the dichotomy we had for the self-joint free case also holds for the self-joint case. So here we have two examples of queries with self-joins, one on the right that has a triad and one on the left that does not have a triad. So one of the first things you are able to show is that the presence of triad in the self-joint case also implies that the resilience is going to be NP-complete. However, the example on the left is one that the resilience is NP-complete. So the absence of triads no longer guarantee that the resilience is going to be polynomial. So how do we move forward in this problem then? Uh, the first result, as I just mentioned, is that triads still imply hardness for resilience in the self-joint case. And then we are left to analyze what happens when no triads exist. So in the remaining of this talk, I'm going to cover four structures that we defined and that helped us characterize the complexity of resilience for queries that contain those structures. It is important to notice that these four structures occur in a particular subclass of conjunctive queries of self joins that I'll define in a little bit. But before we do that, I wanted to talk to you about the representation. So we have been representing the queries by their dual hypergraph, but we're going to notice something strange that happens in the self-joint case. So here, these two queries that are different have that same dual hypergraph. So basically, this representation is ambiguous when we are considering self-joints, and therefore not as useful anymore. So you need to think about a new way to represent the queries that would differentiate those two ones because they are indeed different. In order to do that, we decided to restrict the scope of the queries you're dealing with. And we are now dealing with what we call binary single self-joint queries. So the queries are binary because we only allow unary and binary relations. And we call them single self-joint because only one relation is allowed to participate in a self-joint. And that relation is usually going to be denoted by the relation R. So now that we have this restriction of unary and binary relations, we can actually represent the queries with directed graphs. 
So in this representation, the variables are going to be nodes and the atoms are going to be represented by label directed edges. So here, even though these two graphs are similar, you can see that the one on the left has an edge ZY, while the one on the right has an edge YZ. So they're not the same. And in fact, their resilience is also different. The resilience for QConf is in polynomial time, while the resilience of AC chain is NP complete. So already this new, uh, new way of representing queries is informative. So one of the first structures that we were able to define once we started representing the queries of directed graphs were the notion of paths. So we said that our query has a path if there exists a path between two R atoms in the directed graph representation of that query. And what we were able to show is that the resilience of queries that contain paths is NP complete. And in fact, the, all of the reductions were from the QVC, the resilience of QVC, and you can think of paths in some way of a generalization of the structure that we see in that query QVC. But then now, if we do not have a triad and we do not have paths, things get complicated very quickly. So we decided to start from the simplest example we have. And the simplest example here is just having two occurrences of the R atoms. And even then, we still have four kinds of different structures that can appear. The first of them is what we call a chain, uh, where the two R atoms share exactly one variable, but that variable joins in different attributes. And what we were able to conclude is that any query that contains that specific structure, its resilience is going to be in NP complete. Here, the dotted like labels resemplify possible atoms that can occur. That's why I'm saying this particular case represents a class of queries. The second structure we found is what we are calling a confluence, which is again two atoms that share only one variable. However, they join in the same attribute. In this particular structure, we have two cases to consider. So if X and Z have only one path that connecting, connects them going through Y, then we can show that the resilience of such queries is in polynomial time. Uh, however, if there is an alternative path that does not use Y, then the resilience is gonna be NP complete. So the next structure is what we call a permutation where the two atoms share both variables. In the, for this structure, we also have two cases and we, different, we call them bounded and unbounded. So here you see that Y only occurs in the R atoms and therefore we say that this query is unbounded. So if queries are unbounded, then the resilience is gonna be polynomial. However, in the, if both of the variables are bounded, meaning that both X and Y occur in relations other than R, then the resilience is going to be in NP complete. Uh, the last case is when we have variable repetition. And here, what I mean is that the same atom has multiple occurrences of the same variable. In this example, we have our XX represented by the X and this loop above it. Uh, so when considering variable repetition, uh, the part in here on the bottom is the only one that occurs without having a path. We were able to show that when you have variable repetition in just two R atoms, all of the cases are in polynomial time. Now, before we move on, I just wanted to note that all of the cases in here that are polynomial that we were able to show is polynomial, we did so by a reduction to network flaw. So the reductions were not exactly the same. There were different like things that you had to do. But it's, it's definitely an interesting feature of this problem in that we are able to, at least so far, reduce all of the easy cases to through network flow. So these four cases uh, cover all of the possible ones when we have just two R atoms occurring. And remember that now we are in the land of no paths and no triads. So with all we have built so far, we are able to define a dichotomy result for this very restrictive class of queries, which are the ones with binary, self, binary single self joins and only two R atoms occurring in the query. And here, basically, if the query presents any of the five structures listed there, the resilience is gonna be NP complete, otherwise it's gonna be in polynomial time. Uh, so 
you can see from you know what we got to here that even to be able to prove a dichotomy for a very restrictive uh, set of queries, we needed to consider many, many cases. Um, however, we would like to find a way to unify all of the things we did. And we believe that we can do so because even though there are different, a lot of different things, there are some commonalities. So the first common aspect uh, that I have already emphasized is the fact that all polynomial cases can be solved by reduction to network flow. Uh, for the case where we are like building reductions to prove NP completeness, the reductions are different and we use different uh, NP complete problems, but there are also some common patterns that, that we can see in the reductions. So we came up with the idea of trying to build a template for reductions. So we call that an independent joint path, which is a property of a database with relation to a query. What do I mean by this? So if you give me a query, I'd like to be able to find a database that satisfies that query and that also satisfy a particular set of properties. And we conjecture that if I am, if I'm able to find such database, then the resilience for the query is going to be NP complete. On the flip side, I'd like to also show that if it's not possible to find such database, that we can show that the resilience of the query is in polynomial time by a reduction to network flow. But as I said, we, this is still a conjecture. We don't have a proof that we can actually do this. Uh, and I think that's all for now. Thanks for your attention and I'm open for questions.